water changes. We don't need no stinking water changes. What's up everyone? Frank here and I got your pond update video this week and so it'll be a good one. Uh, I got some great results with the water quality. We got a lot of rain here so it's been a uh, pretty easy going and very, pretty maintenance free to be honest. So it's only been three weeks total since my last tubbing video but it's actually been five weeks total in reality because I didn't actually release that video until later on. Now I figured I'd give you guys an update like I said I would about a month after so Let's check out what we got going on. You can see here, we actually got some pretty good fry growth going on here. Um, a lot of little different colorations that I could see. So this is just an assorted guppy tank, or mini pond I should say. But uh, yeah, I mean, so far it's been really good. I've lost maybe like uh, two fish total since uh, setting it up that I'm aware of. So yeah, it's always really good. Um, I did get some red root floaters to go in the pond but uh, it didn't work out the majority of them ended up going down to the bottom uh, I think the circulation here is just too much so I moved the rest of them somewhere else to where they I think they can survive hopefully um, and I did get those red root floaters from Paul's planted aquariums on YouTube so shout out to him real quick uh, he sold them for only a buck plus shipping so can't beat that I mean he said not only that he also threw in some uh, some penny wart which has been awesome. The pennywort's growing great in the other tank. So, if you guys haven't, go ahead and check out Paul's Planted Aquarium. Sometimes we'll throw out some deals out there for you, so you can take advantage of that. So you can see here, I drilled some little holes on the side. Uh, this is for overflow of water, so when it rains here, which it does rain here a lot, especially as of recently, and uh, what this does is just help maintain the, the level to where it doesn't overflow and fish get out of the tub. Now, I didn't know about this on the first video, so I didn't show it, uh, so I did it sometime in between. I watched uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op's uh, outdoor tubbing live stream, and this was one of his ideas on there, so works out great. Uh, another guy that actually does it is Mr. Science Geek as well. So I want to share a comment from my last video. It's from Cow's Wild World, so Cow's Wild World, check out that channel. It's an awesome channel. Um, but... It was very well written and insightful, so I figured I'd share it. Um, he did ask a question, did I dechlorinate the water before adding any of the plants in my last video, which is when I added water sprite to the tub. Uh, basically, I just threw the tub there, filled it up with water, threw the water sprite in there. I did not dechlorinate. Uh, five days later, I came back to the tub and the plants had essentially melted completely. They were, they were white. They, they completely melted off. They were dead. Uh, <clears throat> Now, I'm not sure if that's the exact cause. My theory was that it went from an indoor aquarium light to five hours of full daylight, but it could be either one. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I did want to do a test though, and actually I have some more water sprite that's already growing outside and in rainwater, so I could actually put that out there, throw some uh, chlorinated water in there and test it. I didn't get to it unfortunately because it's been constantly raining here. Uh, but what I will do is go ahead and do that test. I won't do a separate video on it, but you can follow me on my Instagram and I'll be sure to post some updates on there when I decide to do it. Now, <clears throat> uh, he tells me that that might have caused them to melt back like that. Either way, the tub looks great. Uh, getting some more plants and ferns in there will help tremendously from what I have seen and been researching. Ponds won't build up nitrates as fast as aquariums. Not entirely sure why. It may have to do with all the phytoplankton and microalgae in the water outdoors. Let me stop for a minute right there because this is the most exciting part to keeping the fish outside. I did my water test and I had literally untraceable nitrates. Which made me think, okay, there must be something else wrong. Maybe the uh, ammonia is off. So I tested the ammonia. I don't have the uh, photo of that for you. but. And the reason I don't have that is because I unfortunately broke with my damn one of my uh, vials. But uh, what are you gonna do? I'm, I assume that probably won't be the last time that happens. Uh, but the ammonia was great as well. So as I said, I've been getting a lot of rain, so maybe there is a pH issue. 
and someone even asked on the last video uh, what about pH how, how much is pH affected I did the pH test and surprisingly enough that was almost exactly what it is originally so I have an average pH of 8.0 here uh, I'm in Florida so it is kind of high but you can see from the results pretty much the same thing so I've been very happy I haven't done any water changes I tested it twice once in two weeks and one just before I did this video so there you have it the results speak for themselves now I got some guppy footage at the end here so you can see the guppies from the side because I know seeing them from the top doesn't really uh, do them justice uh, but I wanted to remind you guys real quick that I got the beta show coming up and it's going to be an awesome time uh, you're going to see some beautiful fish so make sure you subscribe so you're aware that when that video comes out and uh, go ahead and uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed it uh, a dislike if you didn't and leave me a comment if you want um, so here's that footage They always think I got food. Oh. If you guys ever seen Ace Ventura, that's what I feel like.